On this morning, when the Bishop Leonard M. Smith was consecrated, two of his Episcopal appointments were his cross and his ring. The cross and the ring are not jewelry. It is not to be treated as such. His cross and his ring both are gold, representing the purification that happens once we are refined. The cross is worn around the neck of the bishop and it is only visible when he is in choir attire as he is well adorned today. When in civic, the cross is in his left pocket over the heart representing how we are hid by Christ. And it is over the heart because Christ guards our heart. And all you will see is the chain representing the bishop is a prisoner to Christ. brothers and sisters then the ring is represented his marriage to the church both are now being removed signifying the bishop's Episcopal jurisdiction has come to an end and there is no Episcopal authority in heaven this appointments are now being retired and given to the son of the bishop as a memorial of the work of Bishop Smith Note, today we are not transferring, transferring Episcopal authority as we not can do. That is not to be worn as regular jury. The bishop are now sealing the bear, wrapping the body of the bishop as we saw that was done in John 19 and 40 when they prepared Jesus' body for burial. Today, my brothers and sisters, the Prince of the Lord Church, Bishop Leonard M. Smith, is now being put to rest. Rest from your labor. Rest now to receive your reward. Rest from many of the years you have preached, ministered to the sick, changed thousands of lives. And today we salute him by saying, well done thy good and faithful servant. Can we give the Lord praise for this gift, this prognosticator, this theologian, this pastor, this father, this friend, to God be the glory.
my brothers and sisters, as we now turn Bishop Leonard Smith, he's now facing, and as he led for many years, he's now leading us even today in our worship experience. Can we put our hands together for this great man of God? Bishop Leonard M. Smith. Now can we put our hands together and open up our mouths and celebrate the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. I need every praiser in this building to open your mouth and celebrate the fact that God has given you another day. Somebody ought to shout, it's another day that the Lord has kept me. We celebrate the life the legacy, the ministry of the Honorable Bishop Leonard N. Smith. Can we celebrate God for 60 years of wonderful living and we know that absent from the body is present with God. Would you look at somebody close to you and tell them since I'm in church I might as well praise him. I can't wait until tomorrow to do it when I think of the goodness of Jesus and oh my God he's done for me my soul cries hallelujah lift those hands and say God we love you God we adore you we honor you in this place 
This choir is getting ready to come and bless us with one of the great hymns of the church, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Would you continue to stand as we sing this great hymn all over the church in their own rendition of it?
If he's been faithful, I don't have to tell you what to do. If he's been good to anybody, if he's been good to anybody, look at your neighbor in the voice of Bishop Rudolph McKissick and just ask him, won't he do it? He's made a way out of no way. Listen, I am Brian Hall and I'm grateful to serve today. I, let us first honor the set man of this house, the honorable pastor of this great facility and ministry, Dr. Alfred Jones. Let's celebrate God for him and for his life and for his ministry. We certainly praise God for you, sir, on this day. Now, we're gonna move expeditiously with this program, Leonard N. Smith style. And uh, those of you that are on program, I want you to move and do what it is that you need to do. When you see your name, you should know who you are by now. And you should begin to move to the appropriate place to do what it is that you have to do. Those of you who are giving expressions, and that means remarks, that does not mean sermons, that you are giving expressions and remarks, that does not mean you're taking a text. When I stand near you, that does not mean I am suggesting, do it, doc, you got it going on, preach, doc. I am saying your time is up, Doc. It's time to sit down. Now that we got those things in order, look at somebody and tell them, let's have church. If your name is on the program and you know what you're supposed to do, would you begin to move this way? We will not announce you, but please remember when you come to make the announcements or when you come to bring remarks, you're not preaching sermons. You're going to make me nervous if you move up here with a notebook full of paper. I'm going to stand beside you immediately. I need you to let's get this right. Look at somebody, tell them let's have some church. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Good morning. Our Old Testament scripture reading will come from Psalm 24. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. The earth is the Lord's and all of its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, he who he has not lifted up his soul to idols, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek their face. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Oh, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning. I'll be reading Romans 8, chapter 8, verses 28 to 31, New King James Version, and it reads as such. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? The word of God for the people of God. Yeah, yeah. 
My wife, Gloria, was Tiffany and Philip's first grade teacher. Daily, she prayed for her students. And by your presence here today and all that you have achieved, Tiffany and Philip, obviously her prayers work. So I trust now that the Lord will hear our prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, you are the supreme creator and the ruler of the heavens and the earth. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. It was you, O oh God, that spoke and life came into existence. And then you spoke again and gave life an expiration date. And so we know that you are sovereign, God, and we honor your sovereignty here today. And so we praise you for who you are. We adore you, and we glorify you for who you are. But we also thank you, God. We thank you first and foremost, O oh God, for our relationship with you through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who because of what he did on Calvary's cross, life no longer has an expiration date, but has a date in all eternity. And so, guys, just as you spoke at the beginning of creation, we pray that you will speak now. Speak healing to the hearts and the minds of, of Tiffany and Philip and their spouses and Yolanda and the rest of this family. Speak encouragement, speak comfort. And then, God, as you speak, we must be mindful that not only must we praise you, but we must thank you as well. And so, Lord, now we thank you. Thank you, God, for the life of our dear brother and friend, Dr. Lennon and Smith. Thank you for his smile. Thank you for his encouraging heart. Thank you for how he fathered his children, how he ministered to the people of God. Thank you, Lord, for sharing us, him with us for these brief 60 years. We're grateful to you now. We thank you, O oh God, for all that's in this assembly that did not view it as robbery to come to show their appreciation to this great man of God. Now, Lord, as we release him to you, continue to mend our hearts, Continue to encourage our soul. God, you know that you promise us that never will you leave us, never will you forsake us, and we are trusting in your promises. God, we thank you, and we praise you. And it's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. The family is overwhelmed and grateful for the countless calls, messages, visits, gifts, and most importantly, prayers that everyone has graciously given to them during this time. The kindness that has been shown has helped them in ways you can never imagine. While they will miss the incredible Ellen S. Your love continues to carry them and navigate them through this life without him on this side. Thank you, and may God continue to bless each of you. While the family received numerous condolences, I will only read several that was pointed out by the family. 
Mount Zion Baptist Church, Triangle, Virginia, to the family of Bishop Leonard N. Smith, John 10, verses 27 to 29, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. Thank you, Yolanda, Tiffany, Philip, and Mount Zion Arlington for granting us the opportunity to host, honor, and celebrate your pastor, husband, father, and dad. Please know that we are not only here today, so also tomorrow, if we are needed, please feel free to call us. Our love for you is unconditional and forever. Bishop Smith was no stranger to Mount Zion Baptist Church, Triangle, Virginia. He has preached many revivals at this branch of Zion. On the first Sunday in March 2010, we opened the doors of this great sanctuary, and we are honored that Bishop Smith blessed and installed this church. So on this first Saturday in March 2022, he is honored to host his heavenly homegoing. Whereas in the providence of God, once again the deaf angel has called home another servant leader. Reverend Dr. Alfred Jones Jr., officers and members of Mount Zion Baptist Church, Triangle, Virginia, feel that it is befitting to express their sympathy to the entire Smith family. We commend you to him who knoweth best and will always do right. We are so sorry for the loss. We know we cannot replace this great servant, but we will try hard to love you as he did. Therefore, be it resolved, when it, it is all over, we would like you to remember, in case there is a time when you just need some cheer, in case there's a problem you would like us to hear, in case there's a favor you would like us to do, we are here if you need us to help see you through. Humbly submitted on this fifth day of March, Dr. Alfred Jones, J Jr., Pastor, Sister Wanda Mickens, Church Clerk. Rivermont Baptist Church, Lynchburg, Virginia. Resolution to the family of Bishop Leonard N. Smith. No matter what your trials are or how big your mountain seems, the Lord is there to see you through. He'll go to all extremes. So if your cross seems hard to bear and you know not what to do, the one who loves most of all will be there to see you through. We, the officers and members of Rivermont Baptist Church, Lynchburg, Virginia, want you to know that our hearts are with you as you gather to bid a Christian goodbye to a loving husband, father, grandfather, forever friend, and a giant among preachers. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Psalms 116, verse 15. Whereas the passing of Bishop Smith was the will of God, and there is a human tie that has been broken, which bleeds the heart in agony and pain. We are encouraged and consoled in the words of Jesus, who said, I will never leave you or forsake thee. Therefore, be it resolved that we embrace the family because of all of us have a common bond that will connect us for the rest of our lives. We know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great, but we want you to know that we share in your sorrow, but more importantly, 
we recognize that his loss is heaven's gain, that we pray that God will continue to give you his help, his strength, and his hope during this time of bereavement. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy placed in the Rivermont Baptist Church's archives. Humbly submitted in Christian sympathy this fifth day of March 22. The Rivermont Baptist Church family, Deaconess Judy R. Ferguson, Clerk Ministry, Deacon Carl T. Connor, Chairman of the Deacon Ministry. Day Spring Community Church, Lanham, Maryland. Condolences to Reverend Dr. Yolanda N. Smith and the family of Bishop Leonard N. Smith. It is with Jesus' joy that I greet you, but also with much sorrow too. I know this is to be an unimaginable painful time for you, and few words can offer you solace. Even still, you must know that God is yet faithful and is near to the brokenhearted. God will be there when you need God most. It is only common in moments such as these that we know in the fullest measure of the consolation of Jesus' assuring promise, I am the resurrection and the life, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Your husband and father was loved by all in the Day Spring Community Church, and he left an indelible imprint on our ministry that shall never fade. We were so pleased each time he came to us, and I am personally grateful to have called him pastor. But not only that, he is my mentor, my friend, and confidant, and my brother beloved. I, along with the elders and the members of Day Spring Community Church, are undergirding you with prayer and concern. We are here for you. May you find strength when you think of him and encouragement when you recall those witty sayings he gleaned from his wise grandmother. And may the memories of his powerful preaching, generous heart, abundant sacrifices, and bullet compassion be your legacy to carry on. As you and the family face the approaching days, trust that God, our refuge, will comfort you. And as stated in the words of the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41 verse 10. So lift your heads even now. Be encouraged, for God is still in control. May the love and peace of God be with you always. In the matchless name of Jesus, Reverend Dr. Cynthia Turner Wood, Pastor. Abyssinia Baptist Church, Capitol Heights, Maryland. To the family of the late Bishop Leonard N. Smith, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5, verse 4. We were devastated when we received the news of the transitioning of Bishop Leonard N. Smith. No words can adequately express our sorrow. Please accept our sincere heartfelt condolences at this most difficult time. Bishop Leonard N. Smith was a great friend of Absinia and to our pastor, Dr. Robert W. Trice, Jr. and First Lady, Reverend Kim Trice. He was always available for his son in the ministry, our pastor, who considered him a great mentor and a longtime beloved brother. Abyssinia especially remembers Bishop Smith as a dynamic preacher and teacher. 
He and his daughter facilitated our leadership seminar, which was a blessing to all the attendees and was fondly talked about days afterwards. As stated earlier, a dynamic preacher, as an overall, in, excuse me, as on several occasions, he was our guest preacher for revival and for our pastor's anniversary. We have lost a great friend in Bishop Smith, yet we know our loss is heaven's gain. He will be truly missed while we are mourning the loss of our friend. Others are rejoicing to meet him behind the veil. Quote by John Taylor. Bishop Leonard and Smith's legacy and memory will forever be in our hearts. His voice may be silent, yet his vision will carry on. We will endeavor to keep the family lifted in prayers. Done by the order of the senior pastor, church officials, and the membership of the Abyssinia Baptist Church on the 5th of March in the year of our Lord, 2020. Dr. Robert W. Trice, Jr., Senior Pastor, Wanda J. Gorman, Church Clerk. Kingdom Fellowship AME Church, Silver Spring, Maryland. To the family of Bishop Leonard N. Smith, dear family, we are extremely saddened to learn the passing of Bishop Leonard N. Smith, the father-in-law of our team member, Reverend Merrick Deans. Lady Shawana, the executive team of Kingdom Fellowship AME Church, and I extend our deepest sympathy and condolences to Bishop Smith's family during this time of bereavement. We realize Bishop Smith's passing leaves a vast emptiness and that he will be greatly missed by the family and friends who knew and loved him. We pray that you will find solace in the many memories you shared with this man of God. We know that no words can lessen the pain that comes with your loss, but we find hope in Jesus' words as recorded in the Gospel of John. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. John 11, verses 25 and 26. Yes, our hope resides in the promises of the Lord that we have everlasting life in him. Our prayers are with you that God, our God, who is the God of all comfort, will grant freely and fully the measure of grace that gives us strength in weakness and despair. We are praying for the family. May God's most abundant blessings be with you. In Christ, Reverend Matthew L. Watley, Senior Pastor. Shiloh Baptist Church, McLean, Virginia. We, the Shiloh Baptist Church family, extend our warmest and deepest sympathy to you and your family. It is our desire to encourage you and to let you know that we are here to walk with you as you journey through this season of bereavement. It is also our desire to remind you to put your hope and trust in the Lord. The Lord's grace and his love will sustain you. The Lord our God never takes you where his grace will not keep you. Although Bishop Smith has departed, it does not mean that God has brought the entire family this far to leave you all now. This season in our lives will require strength from the Lord. Seek him more than you have in the past. Lean on him and depend on him together. He will see you through. Reminding us of this in his letter to the church of Corinth, Paul said, when we are weak, then we are made strong. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 10. On behalf of the diaconate, trustees, associate pastors, servant leaders, 
and the entire congregation. We love you and our prayers are with you all. Be encouraged and continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand. In the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Yours in kingdom advancing, Reverend Dr. Robert F. Cheeks, Jr., Senior Pastor. Mount Ephraim Baptist Church, Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Dear Ms. Yolanda Blizzard Smith, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with thy right hand of my righteousness. Isaiah 41, verse 10. My wife and I were deeply saddened at the news of the passing of your husband and our friend, Bishop Leonard N. Smith. There are no words we can offer that will make this any easier, but hopefully just knowing that in this time of great sorrow, we are lifting you up in our thoughts and prayers. We trust you find solace in these words. Those we love remain with us, for love itself lives on. And cherished memories never fade, because a loved one is gone. Those we love can never be more than a thought apart. For as long as there is a memory, they will live on in our heart. In Romans 8 verse 18, God promises us that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. It is our prayer that God's word will be of great comfort to you and bring you peace during your healing process. Again, please accept our deepest condolences with God's love, Dr. Joseph A. Gilmore, Jr., Pastor. Arlington Coalition of Black Clergy. Resolution of respect for the late Reverend Dr. Leonard N. Smith, a beloved member of the Arlington Coalition of Black Clergy. Today, we are comforted by the words found in Revelations 21, verse 4, which says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Whereas Reverend Dr. Leonard N. Smith recently retired pastor of Mount Zion Baptist Church, Arlington, Virginia, passed from this life on February 20th, 2022. And whereas in the divine providence and perfect timing of God, it has pleased Almighty God to take unto God's self our dear brother, Dr. Smith, though too soon in our estimation. And whereas in God's holy wisdom, God has called home Dr. Smith to dwell eternally with God in the glories of paradise. And whereas the officers and members of the Arlington Coalition of Black Clergy offer our sincere condolences to the family of the late Dr. Smith. Please know that your sorrow is our sorrow and your loss is our loss as we have lost a beloved, respected and vital member of our coalition and community. And whereas Dr. Smith served God's kingdom in ways too numerous to fully detail with devout ministrations to our coalition, the Arlington community, and the kingdom of God, including but not limited as a dedicated servant leader of Mount Zion Baptist Church for 30 years, during which time the church grew both spiritually and numerically in providing tutoring, food assistance, 
financial and mission support, as well as support for local community, residents, and agencies. And whereas Dr. Smith served in many different capacities within the organization throughout the state, nation, and beyond, including president of the Richmond Virginia Seminary, president of the Virginia Baptist State Convention, and as chaplain for both the Virginia County Fire and Police Department. And whereas Dr. Smith also shared the fruits of his labor through Leonard N. Smith Ministries, including as a sought after lecturer, teacher, and preacher for churches, conferences, and conventions, as well as the author of We Need to Talk and co-author of Seen and Sustained. Whereas Dr. Smith was a loving parent of two adult children in whom he instilled a strong devotion to the Lord and a sense of responsibility to others. Therefore, be it resolved that we embrace this bereaved family in our common bond of grief and remembrance of a beloved soul. And therefore, be it resolved that we bow in acceptance of the perfection of God's plan to gather each of us into God's merciful arms when we have fulfilled our task on this earth. And therefore, be it finally resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy be kept in the records of Arlington Coalition of Black Clergy. In the words of John chapter 14, verses one through three, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also respectfully submitted on this third day of March 2022, Reverend Dr. Delisha Davis, President. The women's ministry, okay, sure. The women's missionary and educational auxiliary of the Virginia Baptist State Convention, President Yvette Robinson, Correspondent Secretary Sherilyn Hurd, Baptist Ministers Conference of Northern Virginia and Vicinity, Reverend Dr. Denise Wilson, President, Elevation Assembly of Pastors, done by the order of Elevation Assembly Pastors, Bishop Anthony G. Macklin, Dunbar Alumni Federation, Inc., the resolution of tribute and condolences done by James E. Pittman, Chair Emeritus, Carrie E. L. Thornhill, Chair. Washington National Cathedral, done by the Reverend Canon Leonard L. Hamlin, Canon Missioner and Minister for Equity and Inclusion. And finally, Congress of the United States, House of Representatives, Majority Whip, James E. Clyburn.
Good afternoon. I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor powers, nor principalities, nor things present, nor to come, neither height, nor depth, nor any other creature should be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in our Christ Jesus, Lord. The last time I saw Bishop Smith, I didn't recognize him. Uh, I was accustomed to seeing this strong, confident, robust man, truly one of his kind, preaching his heart out with some of the most powerful and persuasive sermons I'd ever heard. Instead, I found a man small in stature, in a wheelchair. This is backstage at the President Biden rally in October, where Bishop Smith had inspired thousands with his, his invocation. I confess I've long been terrified by death, the, the idea that I no longer exist. Psychologists call it death anxiety. But what Dr. Smith said that day changed my whole mindset existence. Because he was cheerful and charming and welcoming and loving, despite his obvious frailty, he seemed the strongest man in the room. Here's a man who lived his faith, who believed that nothing, neither stroke nor age nor medical complications, could separate us from the love of Christ. Ellen S. was a holy man and a great leader. I have friends with whom I spend much more time, but no one for whom I had greater respect or affection. His life was a blessing for all of us. The way he lived and the way he died teach us how to be faithful children of God. Good afternoon, church. I'm Virginia State Senator Adam Eben. Reverend Smith, Tiffany and Philip, and Carol, I'm honored to be here with you to celebrate the life of a man we all love very much. You know better than all of us that Dr. Leonard N. Smith had a way about him. He had a way in his words, a way in his ministry, and a way in his life. He lived in the ways of a good man. He lived in the ways of a godly man. Psalm 37, verse 23, teaches us that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And the Reverend Dr. Leonard N. Smith was certainly a good man. I first met Dr. Smith in 2003. I was running for the Virginia House of Delegates and attended a worship service at Mount Zion Baptist Church. Dr. Smith graciously introduced me as a candidate. I was thrilled. And then he gave me an admonition. He told the entire church that he was glad that candidates were present that Sunday, and he hoped that they would show up again next time after the election, not just before when they were looking for votes. And so I did what candidates sometimes do. I slunk back as far as I could in my, in my seat, hoping no one would see me. I remembered his admonition, though. So the first weekend after I was sworn into the General Assembly, I got in my car, and drove right back to Mount Zion. But yes, I did it because he told me to, but I also did it because I wanted to. After hearing Bishop Smith preach, it was easy to want to come back. He would take a verse from the Bible, a sentence, even a phrase, and bring it to life, bringing content, meaning, questions, and ultimately inspiration to make us want to be better people. I took spiritual guidance from him. When I brought my Jewish family to the church, they too were moved by Dr. Smith's preaching. So many wanted to hear Dr. Smith preach the word that Easter services had to be held at Northern Virginia Community College. Under his leadership, Mount Zion swelled from 300 members to more than 3,000. Thousands of God's people came to worship, and many of our country's most powerful people. When our nation was divided over the adoption of the Affordable Care Act, the Congressional Black Caucus came to Arlington to pray with Bishop Smith. Presidents sought him out, including Barack Obama and Joe Biden, Governors McAuliffe and Northam, Senators Warner and Kane, and Congressman Byron Moran. They all came to worship at Mount Zion. I was fortunate enough to be able to invite Dr. Smith to deliver the invocation in both the Virginia House of Delegates and the Senate, and was thrilled when he accepted. Earlier this week, the General Assembly unanimously passed a memorial resolution to show its collective respect for Dr. Smith and extend our condolences. And so, Reverend Smith, 
Tiffany, Philip, and Carol, please know we loved your husband, your father, your brother. He led an exemplary life, one we admire and look up to. Psalm 37 continues, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The Lord makes firm the steps of one who delights in him. The Lord did indeed order the wonderful steps undertaken by Bishop Smith. The Lord made firm the steps taken by this good man, and this good man delighted in living out the ways of, the God, of God. May his memory be a blessing to us all. Good afternoon. I am Fire Chief David Pavlitz from Arlington County. On behalf of the Fire and Police Departments, we would like to express our deepest sympathies to the family of Bishop Smith. In the 90s, Bishop Smith agreed to serve as a new chaplain for the Fire Department. He was the start of a multi-denominational chaplain corps. First responders have a calling to help those in need. Whether it's law enforcement, fire, rescue, or emergency service for personnel, First responders have something deep inside to accept risk, face danger, and assist. It is a drive. It is a purpose. It also brings exposure to stress, pain, and death. If there's a person to help those who help, it was Bishop Smith. In his nature and his mission, he provided spiritual guidance in the right measure. He gave counsel and understanding when we were trying to find our bearings. He gave everyone the right spiritual ref refill they needed to keep serving the public good. His words provided inspiration. His actions were our model. I'm not surprised that Bishop Smith was present during one of the defining moments of the century. During the dark and tragic days after September 11, 2001, Bishop Smith, Bishop Smith was with us. He helped first responders find courage above shock, resilience after exhaustion, hope from despair. He understood the moment and kept the faith and raised ours. For his dedication and service to the firefighters, paramedics, and officers, we honor Bishop Smith. Rest in peace and with God, Chaplain 100. shall the glory be lest I forget thy thorn crown brown lead me to Calvary lest I forget Gethsemane 
Lest I forget thine agony Lest I forget your love for me Lead me to Calvary Mm, to Calvary Won't you show me the tomb where you were laid tenderly mourned and wept Oh yeah Angels in robes light array Guarded thee while you slept. Lest I forget Gethsemane. Lest I forget your agony. Lest I forget your love for me. Lead me to Calvary. Oh, thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, lead me, Lord. Let me like me. Through the gloom, come with a gift to thee. Mm. Show to me now the empty tomb and lead me to Calvary. Lead me to Calvary. Oh, may I be willing, Lord, to bear daily my cross for Thee, for Thee, even Thy cup of grief to share. Thou hast borne all for me. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, oh, lest I forget thy love for me, yeah. lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, oh, lest I forget the love that you showed when you died on the tree just for me. Lead me to Calvary, oh Lord, lead me to Calvary, lest I forget your love for me. Lead me. To Calvary. Hallelujah. Are you grateful for Calvary? I mean, don't fool me. Are you grateful for Calvary? 
that he died an ignominious death, but then God raised him from the dead so that you and I might be saved. Would you please do me a favor? Ladies and gentlemen, would you just turn to someone close to you and just say something kind about Bishop Leonard Smith to them? Would you just say something to him? Just, just turn real quickly and say something. Just say something to him about Bishop Leonard Smith. Just say something about him. Just say something about him, please. Just say something about him, just real quick. Just say something about him. Amen. So now you cannot leave and say that we didn't have you on program to speak well of Bishop Smith. You got a chance to give your remarks in your seat and we appreciate all that you have just said. Everything that you just said is so true and it speaks to the life of Bishop Leonard N. Smith and thank you. Give yourselves a hand for your remarks and your expressions. We're moving now to the place where several persons are going to come and make expressions, especially those who are part of the Ecclesia. And I want to acknowledge those of, the, those of us who are here from his global family, and I want them to stand. We have our um, Vice President Bishop Carolyn Showell, who is sharing with us in the pulpit today, and we thank God for her, Vice President Bishop Showell. <laughs> Bishop Jimmy Woodson, who you heard on last night, blessed us tremendously. A part of our executive council is sharing with us, and we're thankful to God for him. Bishop Carol Baltimore, who you all know so well in this area, we're thankful to God. He's a part of our governing council. Bishop Sean Bell, who is the provincial bishop of our area and a part of our governing council. Bishop Jeffrey Reeves, who is our senior metropolitan bishop, who is a part of our executive council of the Global United Fellowship. And I'm going to ask all of those who are members and pastors of the Global United Fellowship, would you just stand real quick so we can see you wherever you are. Let's celebrate God for his global family. Amen. Bishop White, we appreciate you. Bishop Macklin, we're so glad that you're here. And to all of you. Now, we're going to move expeditiously. Uh, Dr. Owens is coming from the Virginia University of Lynchburg, and we will follow in that order. Come on, let's clap our hands and thank God as we get closer to the Word of God. What do I remember most about Dr. Smith? I remember a man that was eloquent and sincere. I remember a man of great substance. I remember a man that elevated everybody's ambitions as if they were his own. I remember him as a board member and how well he served with pride and dignity. He was not afraid of sensitive nor difficult issues. And when it came to fundraising, there was no one greater than he. I also remember him as the special assistant to the president of Virginia University of Lynchburg. But let me also remind you that he was a taskmaster. Yes, he was. It was not long ago from his hospital bed, he arranged a Zoom meeting with Dr. Franklin, the president of the university, myself, chairman of the board, and others, making sure that we were still on task dealing with a building project. And you just think, in his time of illness, he rose up to do what was in his heart. He rose up to do what was correct. And I say to Leonard, yes, Leonard, we are still on task, as so instructed. <laughs> Dr. Smith, I say this, we will all truly miss you. You leave us in tearful sadness. Several days have passed several long, long days. But what you left remains in us. You took part of us when you departed, but the part you left 
compensates, overcompensates our loss. You left us, but you left us love and loving. You left us hope. You left us ideals. You left us strength and strong. But still, you left us in sadness. But what you left, we will always love and cherish. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Virginia University of Lynchburg, Dr. Smith, thanks so very much for the time in your life's journey that you spent with us. Virginia University of Lynchburg will forever and always be in your debt and gratitude. Dr. Smith, it is a far, far better place you go than you ever been before. It is a far, far better sleep and peace than you have ever known before. My brother, my friend, my colleague, peace be with you. Rest in peace and love. To all who are viewing this celebration of life, allow me to offer these brief articulations from a very significant personality in our VUL family. It is with profound appreciation to our Creator God Almighty that I, Dr. Kathy C. Franklin, who is here today, the 18th President of Virginia University of Lynchburg, offer these remarks in honor of my competent and courageous special assistant and supportive visionary, Dr. Leonard N. Smith. Since the death of our beloved colleague, the flowing statements from around the country regarding the meaningful contributions of Bishop Smith have been heartfelt, commendable, and amazingly noteworthy. Virginia University of Lynchburg is indeed the better because of the meritorious service of Leonard Smith as a former student, instructor, trustee, executive dean, Hayes Allen Day chair, and special assistant to the president. The school on the hill shines brightly today because our Dr. Smith, his unselfish labor of love and passion for our institution prevails. In fact, Peter Drucker, a celebrated leadership authority, asserts that in any context, like a university, three things happen naturally. Friction, confusion, and underperformance. Drucker states, everything else that happens requires leadership. With this in mind, in harmony with our capable board of trustees, I cannot tell you the countless times that I picked up the phone to call Leonard Smith in the midst of friction, confusion, and underperformance. And without fail, his sound counsel, influence, and timely financial support would usher VUL forward as an example of excellence in education at the highest level. Ultimately, let me tell you why Dr. Leonard N. Smith, Doc as I affectionately called him, will be deeply missed by me, our campus community, and beyond. I believe strongly that when God wants to use your gifts, he gives you a stage. But when God wants to use your life, he gives you a storm. I have found the unforgettable privilege of witnessing Leonard Smith's incredible gifts on stage for decades amazing. But when Virginia University of Lynchburg saw Leonard endure his storm. That will go down as one of the most unforgettable learning experience in our institution's rich history. Hear me, for when you put a life with bounce back power that has survived some storms on a stage and grant us front row access to his thoughts at Hayes Allen Day, doctoral colloquiums and graduation, that life will have intensified impact on the hearers and others for generations to come. Truly, Leonard's life and Leonard's lessons are irreplaceable. 
That is why our Board of Trustees voted unanimously to rename our famed seminary the Leonard N. Smith School of Religion. As we leave you to this end, Leonard Smith's legacy, Bishop Woodson and others, will endure forever. To the family, his lovely wife, Dr. Yolanda Smith, his children, Reverend Tiffany Smith, Deans and Merrick, Dr. Philip Smith, and Cindy, along with many others, please know that Virginia University of Lynchburg will reserve a very special place in our prayer time for each of you and ask God for his continued blessings to shower you in the days and years ahead. Finally, to all in attendance today, please remember as the scripture records in Psalm 35, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning, for we will see Leonard again in that great getting up morning. Until then, sleep on Leonard. We will keep on working hard for the institution you love so dearly. For as the ancient phoenix, we will continue to recreate ourselves from the ashes of the past until we become the finest historically black college and university in the country. Kathy C. Franklin, PhD, President. greet you today in the only name that matters and that's the saving name of Jesus the Christ our Lord. In 2010, Bishop Leonard Smith became president of the Virginia Baptist State Convention. He came in with excellence. He came in stern. He came in with the focus to raise Virginia uh, State Convention to a new level. I might as well tell you that some, some when he came in really didn't understand the changes that he was going to make. Um, but we're all the better because of Lennon and Smith. Brother was so excellent in leadership that he coined, we gave him the title as the smooth president. <laughs> Y'all know he was smooth. And um, many of us uh, in this room today have received telephone calls from him, and you heard this, heard this line, baby boy. <laughs> stern he was, so stern that in Williamsburg, uh, during our convention, uh, Leonard had spoken to one of the young ladies who had her wares set up there and gave her uh, the dimensions of her, where she's supposed to hang her uh, belongings, and she kept pushing it over to the next person's. Leonard warned her once, excuse me, Bishop Smith warned her once, warned her twice, and we stood there watching the guy take her coats and just roll them out of the hotel. <laughs> Smooth, stern he was. He poured into us. There are many pastors here today. If the truth is told, we are where we are today because Leonard Smith had something to do about it. And I believe that Bishop Smith was that way because he knew that moving day was going to come. Stories told by a man by the name of John um, who worked for many years for a family. And John got old and got tired. And one day, uh, his employer came to him and said, John, it's taking you all day uh, to take care of the wares of the house. Uh, we're going to have to let you go. John said, thank you, sir. And he went out back, got all his tools together. He said, well, before you leave, John, uh, we want to take you in a limousine to wherever you want to go. 
John said, thank you, sir. Walked out the house, walked out the house, and there was this black limousine there. John got in. The driver said, John, I'm so sorry to hear that they're letting you go. Where can I take you? He said, well, just drive. I'll tell you. Pulled out the driveway. John said, make a right. Went down two blocks. John said, make a left. Went another two blocks. John said, make another left. Pulled into this cul-de-sac. There was this house in the cul-de-sac on the hill. The driver looked at John and said, John, you going to work for another family? John said, oh, no, I'm not working any longer. He said, well, John, you're retired now. I mean, is this some of your kinfolk live in this house? John said, oh, no, no, no my kinfolk don't live there. He said, you must, you must going to rent a room out of the house. John said, no, 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 that's my house. I own that house because I knew one day moving day was going to come. And so every, every bonus I got, I put it down on my house because I knew that movie day was going to come. The Christmas gifts they gave me, I put it down because I knew that moving day was going to come. He said, he said I knew that eventually I was going to have to leave that old house and move to my new house. Well, a few weeks ago, I believe Bishop Lennon and Smith also knew that moving day was going to come. Every sermon he preached was because he knew that moving day was going to come. Every class he taught, VUL and Richmond, Virginia Seminary, it was because he knew that moving day was going to come. Every time he pointed every pastor preacher in this room, it was because Leonard knew that moving day was going to come. The Bible says that if this tent, this house, this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, we have another building, not made by hand, but eternal in the heavens. Sleep on, Leonard. Take your rest. Well, good afternoon. Uh, let me say how deeply honored I am uh, for the opportunity to even stand here on today to um, Tiffany and Merrick, thank you. To Phil and Cindy, thank you. I am so grateful uh, and don't take it for granted. And I don't know how I got here <laughs> except by Leonard Smith's blessing. Uh, to Yolanda, thank you so much. We owe you such a debt. Those who know, know that we owe you such a debt. For you saved his life, hallelujah. <laughs> Not just one time, <laughs> you saved his life more than once, extended his days, and assured that his nights were comforted, gave him great joy in ways that we will never know, so thank you. I never had a pastor. I grew up as a PK. So for years I operated as my daddy, as my pastor. But I'm a firm believer that there comes a time when everybody needs their own pastor. I'm a firm believer that you need somebody that's not your father, it's not your husband, but you need your own pastor. The problem is there are not many pastors around anymore who still pastor with a shepherd's heart. <laughs> Leonard Smith became my pastor. He was there for every significant life event that I can remember and some not even so significant, if you'll allow me to be personal for just a minute. For more than 20 years, he was there when my mother passed, he was there at the funeral in Concord, Virginia, a little town outside of Lynchburg. He was there when my daddy died, which was the same day of my wedding day, and he was there to marry me and my husband, and we are forever eternally grateful for that. He put it all in perspective. How do you go get married right on the day that your daddy died? He came to the house that day and said, don't you worry. Your daddy knew that you were in good hands, and so he left as a way to say that. And so I thank God for the Reverend Dr. Jesse L. Wood. My, dad, my, my husband, 
who was there when my daddy died and became my husband. I don't know, I can go on and on about all of the times that he was there. Um, I was never a member at the Mount Zion Baptist Church. I was never um, um, that kind of uh, relationship with him. I thank God, though, that even though I didn't grow up there, even though I wasn't a member there, God gave him to me and he became my pastor in the old school sense of the word. If you've never had a pastor, let me be the one to encourage you today. Find yourself a good pastor, a good old school pastor who will stand with you. But all the, on the other side, um, I have to be honest, he was mosaic-like. What do you mean by that? I mean that he sometimes was moody. He sometimes was fussy. He let you know when you thought you had done something well and it was not good. He let you know that it was not good and you need to do better. He was never arrogant, though he could have been, based on his credentials. But like a multifaceted, beautiful stained glass window, he was this way if you looked over here and you'd see one color, and yet if you looked again, you'd see something else and that you missed before, all of it brilliant and wonderful and revealing something that was deeper than you could even understand. So we who carry the name as sons and daughters of Bishop Leonard N. Smith have a great legacy to uphold. His vision was way larger and longer than his days. We carry this name, and so I want to admonish you. I can't even say a whole lot of all that hasn't already been said about the wonderful things, but you carry this name. I want to admonish you to be like your pastor was. I want you to look good. He always, always looked good. I want you to smell good. <laughs> I want your shoes to be shined and your best self to be put forward. But those are the light things that he brought to us. We who are his sons and daughters have this great inheritance. He left us something money cannot buy. He left us his imprimatur, his standard, his signature on our lives. As a daughter or son of Leonard N. Smith, we have something to uphold. He impressed on us a standard of excellence and taught us not to aim for anything less. And even if it doesn't turn out to be everything that we had hoped it would be, at least our aim was high. For in the words of Benjamin Elijah Mays, low aim is sin. And so he taught us to aim high. Excellence, when, you, when, you're, uh, meant when your start time was 9 a.m., you should be ready to go at 8.45. Do not be running around, setting up no mics, testing no sound, and all of that stuff at 8.55. Excellent. But that's not just it. He gave us an inheritance. He taught us to be enduring, to last, not to quit in our calling, and yet to know that we are not just called once, but we are called many times over the course of our lives. We are called many times. That's why he could... Um, be so many things, president over here, overseer over there, in PNBC, in global, start HOPE in just the last year, start the um, uh, Baptist Catechism Academy, always with new visions and new sights he was enduring on his sickbed, calling you, telling you the next thing that he was about to do. So in the spirit of 1 Corinthians, he reminds us that we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We might be troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus might be made manifest in us. Sons and daughters, we have this inheritance. And if you carry the name, you ought to know that if you're going to be a son and daughter and carry on this legacy, you need to lift as you climb. Lift as you climb, because that's what he did. He lifted, he lifted, he lifted. Not just, it was not just enough for him to rise. He always was reaching back, looking back, rising, and yet stayed grounded enough to remember that he did not get where he got by himself and reminding us we did not get where we got by ourselves. Somebody helped us, so we need to help somebody he taught us to be courageous and not to settle for the status quo. In other words, to open ways for women in ministry. To open ways for women in ministry. So even when the Sadduceic and Pharisaic brothers still paranoid about their pulpits, going around hemming and hawing about women came preach. 
He was able to see with God's eyes and do what Jesus did and make ways for the women. Because if it wasn't for the women, the women who stood at the cross, the women who got to the tomb early, the women who anointed his feet before death, who left their water pots and went and saved a whole a town by telling them about a man that she had met, who left their spices at the empty tomb to proclaim he has risen, he has risen, Christ has risen indeed, but who also preached from the floor these women who were denied pulpits, who cooked in the kitchens and taught in the classrooms and cleaned the sanctuaries and preached all the while. He taught us to be courageous. When nobody else would see us, would hear us, he taught women that you were to be heard. We who are his daughters and sons had a covering. He was a shepherd. In other words, he covered us. And that's important because a woman in ministry, you have to be careful about folks. Because sometimes there are wolves in shepherd's clothing. Not everybody. Well, let me just say, he never led me to danger and kept me from danger. And I am so grateful. Sons and daughters, I would ask you to please stand. If you are a son or a daughter of Dr. Leonard N. Smith, would you please stand on this day? Amen. Just stay standing for just a moment and I'm done. I want you to repeat after me. I will honor the LNS legacy by preaching good, by operating with integrity, by lifting up the name of Jesus, by loving the church, and courageously pursuing excellence. That's it, that's all. You may be seated. If you are not on board, amen, God bless you. If you are not on board with that, it's okay. Just don't carry the name. Just don't call yourself LNS, son and daughter. Be something else, be somebody else, because that's what he was about. Finally, I just want to say carry on, because in the last, one of our last text messages, whenever he had given me some assignment, I don't remember what it was, I asked, I said, do you want to review this ahead of time? Or um, do you need to do anything with it? Or do you want me to just carry on? He just typed, carry on. So that's who we are. That's what we will do. Sisters and brothers, we will carry on. We say to you, our Father in ministry, well done, sir. Thank you for every lesson, for all the time, for each word. Take your weary soul to its rest, for we, your daughters and sons, will carry on down here lifting high the name of Jesus. Good night, dear one. We'll see you in the morning. We greet you in the name of him orders our steps and meets us with mercy to the angel of this house Pastor Alfred Jones to our officiant my brother Bishop Breon Hall to one of the golden throated preachers and sages of our pulpit one of our generals our preacher for today Dr. H. Beecher Hicks to all of the bishops and clergy to Lady Yolanda to Carol, to Tiffany, to Merrick, to Philip, to Cindy, to the family, to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ and creation, ladies and gentlemen. It was in the year 1993 in Toledo, Ohio, where I was pastoring along with then Reverend Breon Hall. He invited me over to hear one of his best friends I met him after church. I had been mesmerized by his handling of the Holy Writ and the silky smooth voice with which he talked. It was then the Reverend Leonard Smith. 
who became Dr. Leonard Smith, who became Bishop Leonard Smith. I went from being Reverend McKissick to being baby boy. <laughs> if he's never called you baby boy, you might not be as close to him as you think. <laughs> I vividly remember at the beginning of the Global United Fellowship, which I was one of the first vice presiding bishops. Bishop Hall and I called him. We had told Bishop Ellis about him, and that he needed to be a part. After some choice words with that silky voice, he agreed to be the Bishop of Senior Pastors, but so impressed Bishop Ellis that he then was elevated to one of our vice presiding bishops. I've heard so many people over the years call him Dr. Leonard Smith, and then in other circles, Bishop Leonard Smith, none disrespecting the other, some calling him Dr. Smith because they didn't believe in Bishop Smith because they did not understand what all of us should understand, and that is that you don't have to divorce your anointing to marry the academy. He was both and at the same time. We are here today with tears in our eyes because grief is the price you pay for love. And although it would be selfish for us to wish he was still here, we are human, and our anointing does not dismantle our humanity. When someone has been impactful upon your life, you miss them. And so we thank God for his life and his legacy. I heard Bishop Woodson say last night that Bishop Leonard Smith had fire shut up in his bones. And I was reminded of a story in 2 Kings around chapter 13 where a dead man was thrown into the tomb of the prophet Elisha. When he fell on the bones, he was resurrected. We're not told in that scripture what it was about those bones. We're not told in that scripture what was so unique about the bones of Elisha. So there has to be nothing but suppositional exegesis about those bones. But perhaps those bones caused resurrection in that man because there was still anointing in those bones. And perhaps there was anointing still in those bones because Elisha died before he was empty. Because what God gives you on earth has to be used up on earth. What God gives you on earth, you cannot take back to heaven. There are no souls to be saved in heaven. There's no rebellious nation to prophesy in heaven. Perhaps Elisha died before he was empty. But I thank God Leonard Smith died empty he lived full and he died empty his bones were empty before he left here he emptied his bones in places like VUL he emptied his bones in places like Richmond Seminary he emptied his bones in churches where the Lord allowed him the stewardship of shepherddom he emptied his bones in sons and daughters, as you heard so eloquently spoken about today. He emptied his bones as a husband and as a brother and as a father and as a grandfather. He emptied his bones in helping pastors and preachers. He emptied his bones in helping Global United Fellowship and pastors there. I don't know about you, but I want to die and go to heaven empty. And we can celebrate today because those bones that were brittle, but they were empty. Those bones that had to be helped upstairs near the end of the day, but they were empty. 
we can celebrate today because there's nothing left in those bones because they were empty when he died but thanks be to God those bones were empty because new bones got full we give God the glory and the praise today because he lived full and died empty now he's got new bones well he doesn't need a wheelchair he's got new bones where nobody has to help him up and sit him down he's got new bones where he can walk for himself and talk for himself he's got new bones where he doesn't need chemotherapy and medication he's got new bones where the wicked shall cease from trembling and the weary shall be at rest if there's a lesson we can all take from Leonard Smith it is don't let your bones be full when you die but make sure you die empty I, I was I was I was traveling the other day and uh, I had some water with me and I forgot it was in my book bag and so as I was going through TSA in Jacksonville where they know me uh, they pulled my book bag to the side and I, you know I, I speak in tongues in many ways and so <laughs> there were some tongues that came out of my mouth because they know me up in here why are they pulling my book bag so one of the TSA agents who was my member said Bishop what you got in here I said man I don't have nothing in there I forgot I had the water and he pulled it out and he said Bishop you got this big bottle of water and I said well man I'm your bishop just let me hold on to it he said oh no Bishop he said there are rules you can't take this bottle on the other side he said, but Bishop, don't be upset. He said, I'm looking at this brand you got. He said, leave that one here in the trash because they got better brands on the other side. Just the other day, Leonard Smith's brand got to the gate and the angel said to him, oh, Leonard, you can't take this brand to the other side. Put this one in the trash because on the other side, there's a brand called immortality on the other side. There's a brand called incorruptibility on the other side. There's a brand called eternal life on the other side. There's a brand where he now sits by the angels declaring all day long, all oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate. Is there anybody in here that's ready for the new brand on the other side? Sleep well, baby boy. We'll see you in the morning. give God a great praise in the house today. First for God, but then for Dr. Leonard N. Smith. I praise God for the privilege and the opportunity to stand before you on today. All praise and honor to our great God. To the Smith family, my extended family, to Dr. Yolanda, Carol, Tiffany, Merrick, Philip, Cindy, and to the grandchildren, entire family. We are forever connected because of the bond that we share because of Dr. Leonard N. Smith. Thank you so much for sharing him with us. On behalf of my husband, John, and I, we extend our deepest condolences to you. We love you. No ask is too great as we move forward. I met Dr. Smith in May of 1995, and then God led me to Mount Zion to unite uh, with the Mount Zion Baptist Church and Dr. Smith's ministry in January of 2007, I united and I felt led because I wanted to learn the art and the craft of preaching and pastoring. And I have been so well equipped because I've sat at his feet and I've learned. Everything that I know about ministry, I learned it from Dr. Leonard and Smith. And so Dr. Turner Wood, I accept your charge and your challenge to move forward in that charge and challenge. Dr. Smith, has been present for all of the significant events in my life, my father's passing, and I knew he was ill, but he journeyed to Danville, Virginia 
and he was there. He was there when John and I married, and I believe we were the last couple that he married at Mount Zion. And so we are super excited for that privilege and my licensing and my ordination. So for all of those significant events in my life, I am so grateful he has been present in my life. And so I am grateful. Does anybody need the Lord today? God, I need you like I've never needed you before to stand at the sacred desk today. Mm, not a second or another minute Not an hour of another day But at this moment with my arms outstretched, yeah, yeah I need you to make a way As you have done so many times before through a window or an open door, I stretch my hands to thee. Come rescue me. I need you right away. I need you now. Lord, I need you now. I need you. Another second or another minute, not an hour of another day, but Lord, I need you right away. If I ever needed you before to show up and restore all of the faith that I let slip away while I was yet searching the world for more the truest friend I have indeed God you're my best friend I know indeed I stretch my hands to thee come rescue me I need you right away the agony of being alone the fear of doing things on my own the test of trials to come to make us strong the feelings of guilt hurt shame and defeat the waves of trials that beat upon me but to know Lord that in you I've got victory yeah. I need you now Lord I need you now oh, I need Another second of another minute, not an hour of another day, but Lord, I need you. Lord, we need you. Lord, we need you right away. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour, oh, I need thee, come on and bless me, come on and bless me now. My Savior, Lord, I come, 
I come, I come to thee. Come on, let's lift it up. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come, I come, I come to thee. Come on, let's bless the Lord. Come on, let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bishop McKissick, Bishop Uncle Bree, <laughs> to everyone here, um, thank you all so much. You know, just sitting there and hearing all the expressions, um, I, I just, I was just thinking, you know, who are y'all talking about? <laughs> <laughs> This dude was tough, okay? This dude was tough. Um, and as I got older, I realized he's tough on the people that he loves. Um, and if he's tough on you, it means he loves you. And if he loves you, it means he sees greatness in you. And if he sees greatness in you, He's going to get it out of you, whether you want to or not. Um, you know, I'd, if I could just tell you all anything that I think my father would want me to say to you all, um, he would say to always be kind, be gracious, be generous, care for the elderly. He would say, Give second chances, because this dude was the king of second, third, fourth, and fifth chances. He would say, maintain your integrity. He would say, give your whole heart and love the Lord until your last breath. Finally, he would say, love people. Love the people. Love all the people, even the people who don't love you back. Love them. And um, if you see someone on hard times, you help them out. No questions asked. Don't ask for the backstory. Just help them out. Yeah. And uh, while you're doing all always remember to be smooth with it. <laughs> all right? Make it look good. Dress nice, because if you dress nice, you act nice. Um, and um, I'm going to miss my father a lot. But uh, my sister and I, are well equipped. We're well equipped, and I don't question it. 
So, thank you all so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's very interesting being on the other side of this. Um, you know, we've lost people in our life before, but no one this close. And, um, but you know, we've kind of, in a weird way, have been preparing for this our whole lives. Um, our dad would always say, you never know when your turn is coming, but it's coming. And it was very, I mean, we were young. We just didn't, you know, really think much about it, but it was very sobering um, as I got older because we see that seasons change. We see that people come and people go. Um, so he would always be very forthcoming about talking about death, especially his, even like when we were like teenagers and he was being really creepy and talking about stuff. And we were like, Daddy, we're like 11. Why are you talking about <laughs> like when I'm dead and gone, y'all going to miss me when I'm dead and gone? We'd be like, OK, <laughs> like, why are you doing this? Um, so as Phil said, we're, we're equipped, we're prepared. And of course, we're going to miss someone with everything that we have. But um, you know, we, we knew this is coming. We knew it would come. Um, I just do want to say a few things about my dad. Uh, I feel like a good portion of us here today could probably be in a support group. And this is the support group that whenever LNS would ask you something, for some reason we just could not say no. <laughs> could not say no. And even if you were busy, even if you just had so many things on your plate, even if you had things scheduled for the day, whatever he asked, whenever he asked, you just couldn't say no. So if this were a sermon, this is not, but if it were, it would be titled, Couldn't Say No. And um, we, we just, we couldn't say no to him. Um, whether it was a program, something at school, something at church, even if it was like something, you know, let's go get something to eat. Well, Daddy, are we, uh, we have plans today. No, you don't. Come on, come on, let's go. <laughs> and we find us spending like the whole day with him because we just couldn't say no. And um, that's who he was. He couldn't say no. Um, Daddy couldn't say no. He couldn't say no to God. Um, and in particular, there were three things that he couldn't say no to. Um, and I'm going to do this in LNS fashion. I tried to come up with some alliterations. So uh, first thing he could not say no was to people and to positions. And I say positions because if someone ever needed him to do something, if someone ever needed him to step in and fill in or to rally people and gather people, no problem, I got it. He would do it without hesitation, without blinking. He would do it. So all of the, the people that have spoken today about all the things that he's done, things in his bio, it doesn't even touch all of the roles that he has, that he has stepped in for. He's done so much stuff behind the scenes, so much stuff that Phil and I know, so much stuff that we don't know. Um, and it is amazing to just see how hard he worked, see how hard he loved, um, regardless of how people are. Because, you know, we know people are people. Um, and I say that being people, right? Sometimes, you know, we feel one way one day and feel one, day, you know, one way the next. But he was consistent. He, um, he was faithful. Um, as Bishop Woodson said last night, he was obedient. And um, he just, he couldn't say no. He also couldn't say no to particular places. And the two places that he could not say no to were the church and to VUL. He couldn't say no. Um, like it was mentioned, he, him being in the hospital bed. Um, I remember after he first had his stroke and it was, I forget what it was, but it was like 
he was he was like kind of coming back and coming to and he just started talking and he was just like yeah yeah I, he was like first he was like i, I gotta call nolan because we, we got to do something for for vul we were like daddy like you just woke up <laughs> like from a stroke and he's talking about vul and getting things together i think it was for, for hayes allen day or something like that and he was already his mind was already there like no matter what um and just the church at large, he loved the church. Like church was his happy place. Like he would get, yeah, he would get excited about church. And I, I know that was his job, but he would just, he loved to be in church. He loved it. Um, and even when he wasn't in church, he would love to just listen to church stuff, show us something on his phone. Here, here, look at this. I'm just sit here. We're watching like this old school, like, churches from like down in North Carolina, South Carolina, and they sing in the line and metered hymns, and he's just like sitting there and smiling, and I'm just like, he loved church. He loved church. Um, and then lastly, he couldn't say no despite his private problems. Um, so no matter what he was going through, and this was even before, you know, um, he got sick, right? So, um, my dad always, he always kind of had stuff that he dealt with, okay? And, um, but a lot of you all will probably never even have known it because he couldn't say no. Um, and uh, he was just really inspiring, uh, just being able to, to do all that he did throughout his whole life, um, and even until the very end. Um, and as much as I want my dad to be here, I mean, that's, there's really not much more I could get from him. I mean, he was here for everything. He saw his grandbabies. He saw us. Phil became a doctor. I became a reverend. Like, just all this stuff. <laughs> like, all this stuff that, that we would have never imagined, that we didn't imagine or didn't dream for ourselves, and he dreamed it for us. People say, like, they've been saying to me, oh, Tiffany, you're so strong. And I'm not, okay? Um, I have strong moments. But I do like to operate in authenticity. And when I, when I feel like crying, I'm going to cry. When I feel weak, it's okay, because I know in my weakness, yeah. God is there and he's strengthening me. Um, but... We're strong, we're standing here today because we couldn't say no. And early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, so y'all you know, know I'm coming to a close now. <laughs> early one Sunday morning, we got a call and we knew that it was, that it was time. And we all, we were not, expecting it that day and we were not ready for it um but we couldn't say no we knew that we knew daddy was ready to go home and um like bishop mckissick said he did not he everything that was in him is gone like he poured everything out. He left completely empty. And so we couldn't say no. And we were with him. We were with him. Um, Yolanda, um, Auntie Carol, us, Merrick and Cindy, and we were with him. And it was the most beautiful experience. I think I've encountered. And I say that because I've encountered a lot of beautiful things. Um, you know, I have kids and all that stuff too, and I was, you know, being a mom, but to be there with the man who saw me take my first breath, I got to be there and rub his head when he took his last. And if that just isn't the beauty of God, 
and the beauty of life personified, then I just don't know what is. So my tears are for, yes, right, we're human. We loved him, but we are happy that he is at peace. We are happy that he has that big, wide grin on his face, Amen. cutting up up there. Uh, we are happy. So um, I know my daddy's not in there, and I know his, his, his flesh, but my daddy, that spirit, that LNS that we all know, we know where he is. So we couldn't say no, and I, it is our sincere prayer that whatever it is that God has called you to do, whatever that you have been assigned to do, whatever you have been purposed to do, that you don't say no, and that you leave today feeling more invigorated and powerful and equipped to do it because God has put it in you. And I think we all want it to be said when it's our time, because our time will come that we gave it everything. And that there's just nothing else left. So, um, yeah, that's kind of it for me. You want to say one more thing, Phil? All right, everybody. The family, Yolanda, Tiff, myself, Auntie, Merrick, Cindy, we thank you all. And we're yes. going to do this one more time, okay? We can't thank everybody, mm -hmm. so we want to thank Lottie, Lottie Dottie, Dottie, and everybody. everybody. God bless. We're preparing now to hear the word of God from his pastor, the pastor emeritus of the Metropolitan Baptist Church, one of the greatest voices in the kingdom, one who can preach and will preach, who can preach through a storm and even after the storm. Dr. H. Beecher Hicks is going to come and bless us. I want this musical aggregation. Can we celebrate God for them? As they get ready to come and bless us, if you would just do us one favor and do the quick version of what you're getting ready to do so we can hear the word of God. Amen. Do you all agree with that? Amen.
be done I'll work and work Until he comes He changed my life completely And now I sit I sit at his feet I've got to do I praise God for the short version. <laughs> Would you give God praise for Nolan Williams? <laughs> All the musicians waving at me, waving. It's no surprise to anyone that we've been engaged in many ways 
and music ministry has certainly been one of them. I want to talk about something very simple. And then, and, then, and then bring it to a quick conclusion and then we can get ready to move on in another direction. I want you to understand the meaning of the word smooth. Whole lot of folk want to be smooth. The problem is that smooth can get you in a lot of trouble. Because smooth can turn to slick. And the problem with many churches and with church people is that in their effort to be smooth, they wind up being slick. But I want to let you know what it means to be authentically smooth. Um, I learned a lot from Leonard Smith. One night I was in North Carolina and I was there on a preaching mission and it started to rain rained viciously almost. And I called Bishop Smith to let him know that I wouldn't be coming because the weather was too bad. There was danger in the flood. And so he was very gracious. He was almost smooth. <laughs> he was very gracious. Told me that he understood. He would make out all right because the next morning he had to give a lecture there at the school. And he understood if the weather was bad. The next morning, I discovered something had happened overnight. Overnight, Bishop had disturbed the Lord. And it asked him to see if he could do something to bring my lecturer to the hall. That morning, I got in a car in North Carolina, and I found myself in Virginia, having made the journey from a car that had been provided for me by this slick, no, smooth. <laughs> he, he did not, he did not struggle with me, he never gave a, 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 a note of, of disconcern, of, of being moved in any difficult way. 
But before I knew it, he had moved me from one state <laughs> to the next. And I don't know to this day how much the ticket costs, how to find my, pay, my way on the campus, but he made it by being generous and kind and thoughtful. He learned how to be smooth. Wonder how I could do that? Somehow, in the process of it all, across the years, I gained a friend. And when I tell you this was a friend who didn't need to have large banners waving in the air, but in his own simple, serious way, he showed us how to be smooth and get the job done and get the work complete. So let, let me tell you, there's more to this story. This preacher taught me how to be generous. Hope I learned the lesson well. But let me tell you something. And Things in church don't always go well. Sometimes things happen and they go backwards rather than forward. Pain strikes in serious ways. And if there's ever a professional that needs to know that they have a friend. It's the pastor. Yeah. 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 Now, maybe you don't understand what I'm saying, but there came a time in my ministry when I found myself face to face with tragedy and with pain. And a sense of aloneness and not knowing how or what the end would be. And in your church, listen now. When the money runs slow, you got trouble on your hands. I know you don't want to believe that, you don't want to hear it, but it's the truth anyhow. But in a moment, in my church experience, I found the money running slow. I had a phone call. I had a phone call for someone who said, Hicks, how are you? And from that day to this, I have never forgotten the generosity of Leonard Smith who made a way when there seemed to be no way, 
who provided friendship for me when no one else even understood that I needed it. And so, here came Leonard Smith on a Sunday morning, wrong Sunday afternoon, it was. He made his way to Metropolitan Church. And by the end of that afternoon service, we found out that Leonard Smith had called churches all over town. And by the end of the afternoon service, nearly a quarter of a million dollars had been raised. And I just want to, I want to thank him. After all of these years to know, I want you to know that I remember who it was that stood by my side when I needed somebody to stand by my side, when I needed someone to help me in my darkest days of distress, somebody who would stand by me and understand that it was almost time for everything to be spent and everything to be used. And so, I'll go home now knowing that I still have a friend in his children and grandchildren so that let me tell you how it gets close to you. It's not unusual for me to go preach somewhere and offer a word of preaching. But sometimes Though, though the storm keeps raging in my life, and my soul keeps struggling with the word. My, my, my soul's been anchored. Anybody here had your soul anchored? My soul's been anchored in the Lord. So when the storms rage, when the winds blow, when the disturbing pathways of my life have been tossed to and fro, my soul, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Though the storms Keeps on raging in my life. And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still, that hope that lies within and be assured. As I keep my eye upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. And if the storms don't cease, and if the winds keep on blowing, 
in my life. My soul has been tangled in the Lord. Lift your hands and declare that my soul is anchored in the Lord. To this family, the God that we serve does all things well. We live in the mystery of misery. But God takes the same material and makes misery our miracle. The little boy begged his mama and daddy for a parrot. They got him the parrot. And the parrot could talk just as well as the kid. After a few weeks, the little boy got tired of the parrot. He said, because he doesn't do anything but talk. He became enamored with eagles. His father said, eagles fly. And the little boy said, well, I'm tired of the parrot who only sits in the cage and does a whole lot of talking, but he can't fly. Dr. Smith's voice may be silent but today he's flying and we celebrate God for a voice that may be silent on this side and as the scripture says while he's yet dead he's still speaking would you lift your hands father we thank you for what we've allowed to experience because of this voice we thank you, God, that his voice may be silent, but we thank you that he's still speaking to us. I thank you, God, that you protect his family now and keep them in the hollow of your hand. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do. Our souls are anchored. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the sweet communion of his spirit, be with you now henceforth and forevermore and the people of god said together hallelujah, hallelujah. and amen would you stay situated in your seat settle your saddles for a moment uh, these bishops are going to process out and this family is going to go out and we're going to take out our dearly beloved bishop leonard and smith good night baby boy we'll see you in the morning Those of you who would assist in taking out the flowers, if you would come now, please. Followed by the bishops who are in the pulpit, they're going to go out, they're gonna greet the family on their way out. Bishop McKissick and I will take out our dearly beloved bishop and the family will follow us.